Thomas Tuchel. Thomas Tuchel. Thomas Tuchel. Hello, I am the Irish guy, and I am speechless. Go slap out an episode of Downton Abbey. Pour one out for Maggie Smith, because I am just going to sit here for the next hour drooling on the floor. I cannot believe that England have actually managed to convince a Champions League winning manager to take the job. I mean, don't forget, Southgate was an accidental appointment that the FA stumbled upon in the middle of a crisis. The last two managers the FA actually appointed for real were from West Brom and Sunderland. To now get a man who's taken PSG to their first ever Champions League final and Chelsea City just their third. It is crazy. Oh, but the English manager must be English. I'm sorry. Have you seen the current crop of English managers? The, the list isn't pretty. Christ above, Steve Cooper looks like a toe. I don't want to be mean, but the England manager needs to exude confidence, charisma, style. He shouldn't be putting the nation off their food whenever he's seen drinking soup. And also, nobody seems to realize this yet either, because he did win England the under 17's World Cup, but the bloke is actually Welsh. He's probably got a tattoo of Gavin and Stacey on his foot. Lads, this two shot appointment astounds me, because Graham Potter is fully in the mud. This is somebody who was gambling his career on getting the England job. And. Can you blame him? Was the Brighton? He was seen as one of the best, actually, he was seen as the best English manager in the game. Actually, scratch that, because at one point, there was a conversation for Potter being the best manager in the Premier League. Play the clip. Is Graham Potter the best manager in the Premier League? Now, I think he's one of the most exciting managers, English managers we've had in years. You know, he could be another Bobby Robson. That statement has aged worse than the dead mouse in my fridge. Yeah, here was a comment on that very video. I'd love to see Potter managing the England national team. His football of Brighton is such fascinating to watch. Lads, Potter fever has massively died down. And not just because JK Rowling likes to drink and tweet. No, nowadays, after his high profile Chelsea meltdown, everyone has sort of realized that all along, this guy was about as special as unbuttered toast. Lads, Potter was getting compared to Sir Bobby Robson for his overseas work. Lads, in my head, the bloke was just Chris Coleman the second, because that man was a Premier League boss at 32. He was given the Real Sociedad job at just 37. This is somebody who took Wales to a Euro 2016 semi-final. To me, that is more impressive than Potter's degree in emotional intelligence and nine years of forcing his wife to live in the dark. Potter must feel absolutely devastated because he was placing all his eggs in this one basket. This is a man who has not worked in close to 18 months. And yeah, you might think he's, he's perfectly happy to receive 200,000 pounds a week still from Chelsea to do nothing but eat donuts on the couch and befriend the cat. But no, I don't think that his absence from football has been down to laziness or the fact that he's enjoying family time off. Lads, there's only so many museums you can visit with your wife. The man has been actively rejecting clubs, big clubs, to hold out for England. I bet like how Michael Chandler has wasted two years of his career by waiting for Conor McGregor to sober up. He has probably neglected big money spinning fights and it's just sad to see. Chandler hasn't depressed me that much since he died in a bath. Well, like, I mean, part has rejected Ajax. Apparently this European giant, a club shrouded in Johan Cruyff legacy, they were not able to afford the wages of somebody who was once the technical director for the Ghana women's team. Uh, what? This man also turned down one of the most successful clubs on, pla on the planet in rejecting Rangers. Just a week after he snubbed Leon, another glittering titan of a team. I last, that club was winning the French League seven seasons on the bounce, but he was getting bullied at university. It's like Potter was doing a world tour of saying no to giants. He also said no to Jim Ratcliffe and Nice, which is very, very silly, because that would have surely been an audition for the Manchester United job. He also rejected a return to Premier League football at Leicester City a few months ago. He said no to a Brighton return, and most recently was apparently in the picture for the Roma job. But I'm guessing he said no to that as well. Lads, Potter, someone who two years ago, who was seen as an upgrade to Tuchel, he took the German's job at Stamford Bridge. There were at least people in the Chelsea boardroom who saw him as the better coach, and yet two years later, Tommy has sprung the ultimate revenge by nicking his England dream, despite being German. Oh, this must be bafflingly cruel. A dark day for England. Three lions gamble on a German. Noto German is in all capitals. As if the FA have just appointed a monster from space. But two only is 18 months to prove he's up to it. 18 months? I don't think so, mate. Because Southgate got nearly 10 years. You know, the Middlesbrough flop. Two shot has won. The Champions League. Gareth never won so much as a raffle at school. This is a treble winning manager. Okay, with, with PSG, so it doesn't really count. But still, yes, I know this man falls out with the hierarchy everywhere he goes. Borussia Dortmund, PSG, Chelsea, Bayern Munich, but come on. It must have been a monumental headache trying to cope with the toxic egos in Paris. He probably felt like a babysitter. Probably like me trying to boss around the Kardashians. 
I don't think they're gonna listen to me. And at Stanford Bridge, can you really blame the man for being exasperated at having to explain to an American tycoon why a nearly 40-year-old Cristiano Ronaldo was not suitable for a high-pressing Chelsea side? People are saying that he caused the Chelsea dressing room split because he broke up with his wife. Sorry. At Chelsea? Does nobody remember when the Chelsea club captain was allegedly getting friendly with his actual teammates' girlfriends? Man, I don't think Mason Mount was exactly clutching his pearls because his manager decided to get a new girlfriend. I mean, the media kept constantly referring to Tuchel as, as heartlessly ditching his family for a younger girlfriend. Yeah, they kept referencing that. A younger girlfriend. Um... She's 39. It's not like he lured a teenager into a gingerbread house. Tuchel's divorce had nothing to do with his Chelsea sack. It's just media garbage. And yeah, look forward to the media trying to absolutely destroy this German coach from minute one. Oh, Tom, you're soon going to have gutter journalists snooping around your rubbish bins, hoping to find secrets in the bottom of a Frosty's box. Get ready for every snippet of your personal life to be investigated to such a stupid extent. I really don't even envy this guy. By taking the England job, and especially with at least 30% of the nation already wanting him to fail, he's essentially agreeing to shove his privacy in a bin. Look, English management is in absolute crisis. Let 442 rank the 10 best English managers in the game right now, as recently as July. Do you know who squeaked into the top 10? Paul Heckingbottom, the bloke who just presided over one of the worst teams in Premier League history. The guy who became the first ever Prem boss to lose 8 0 at home. According to 442, this man warranted an interview from the FA. English fans might be asking for an English coach, sure, but I'm sorry. Are you sure? I think seeing this former Hibernian flop sitting in the waiting room in St. George's Park, noisily slurping on the Fanta Orange. No, it would be like your nine-year-old cousin pestering you to bring him to see a film about Santa. Yeah, he ain't exactly gonna be thrilled when he's crying into his popcorn halfway through Terrifier 3. Not when his parents have to fork out for a year's supply of therapist bills. Be careful what you wish for. It's actually kind of mad how much damage that Chelsea sack has done to Potter's stock because he only wedged into sixth, just one place above some ginger nugget who learned his tactics while was playing Football manager in his underpants. According to this list, Potter is actually a worse manager than Eddie Howe, Gareth Southgate, Sean Dyche, Rob Edwards, and Gary O'Neill. Lads, I'm impressed because a year ago, I thought the next England manager would either be Potter or Edwards. After his marvelous work at Luton Town, and let's be real, if you want to talk about image, this bloke looks like a model for Jim Shark, but the fourth best English manager in the world, apparently, currently has Luton Town 21st in the championship, and he's the fourth best. The fourth best? Lads, I don't agree with this list. I actually think that both Steven Gerrard and Frank Lampard have massively suffered because their management career has been nothing in comparison to their world-class playing careers. But I am sorry, how on earth is Gerrard deemed to be a worse manager than O'Neill? Have we just forgotten that he led Rangers to an invincible title-winning season after inheriting a team who were finishing below Aberdeen? Have we forgotten that he was once placed on the same Newcastle United shortlist as Nikola Arteta in 2019? Have we forgotten that he put together a Rangers team that were an Aaron Ramsey penalty miss away from becoming European champions, sort of. Just six months after he left? How can the fifth best paid manager in the world not even scrape into the top 10 of English managers? He should be top five at least, and similarly with Lampard. No trophies, no, but he did a decent job with Chelsea, and like Gerrard, assembled a team that would actually become European champions weeks after he left. He almost took Derby County into the Premier League, and he kept a pretty horrible Everton team up as well. Both men are at least better than Gary O'Neill, and I thought either one would have been an okay candidate to be England boss. Purely for the aura alone. I mean, sometimes in international management, aura can play a huge role in a tournament. It's why I think that despite being a Monaco joke, I think Thierry Henry could still be a decent France boss in the future. So people have been crying about the fact that it should have been an English boss. Well, who? Who is there? Eddie Howe is 100% committed to Newcastle United. He is the only one who'd have been good enough for this job, but Tuchel, he's even better than Howe. So, can Tuchel win England the American World Cup? Yeah. Yeah, he can. Lads, I have never, ever, backed England to win any tournament in my life. I'm not backing them. I'm not saying they will win, but they have a better chance with Tuchel than they ever had before because Tuchel, he's not an upgrade on Fabio Capello, no. But this crop of players is definitely better than the aging squad he had at his disposal. I mean, come on. England's first choice goalkeeper in the knockout rounds of that World Cup was one month of 40 and was signing for Bristol City after a relegation with Portsmouth. What does silently devastate me though is that you have managed to steal someone who I wanted to be Ireland boss. My first choice was Lee Carsley, who you then turned into an extremely awkward interim pick. But my second choice was, um, your your, your current assistant boss, Anthony Barry. Someone who was Republic of Ireland assistant manager under Stephen Kenny two years ago. Anthony Barry is in the frame to replace Stephen Kenny as Republic of Ireland head coach. Damien Duff, Anthony Barry would be an amazing appointment for Ireland. He said no. 
You just can't help yourself. Oh, wow. Well, Barry really is putting together one of the most glittering assistant managerial CVs in the world. Wigan, Chelsea, Ireland, Belgium, Portugal, Bayern Munich, and England. This reminds me of when a ridiculously average Paul Clement carved out a world-class Wikipedia page just by constantly clutching to Ancelotti's pockets. The FA have announced this appointment as referring to Barry as an English coach. English? English? His name is Tony Barry. Barry? Barry! He's got the same name as an Irish tea bag. How have you managed to steal both of my preferred options to be Ireland's boss? Can you imagine if England play USA at the World Cup? A mouth-watering coaching matchup between Pochettino and Tuchel. Two blokes with similar recent CVs. I mean, in the usually drab, putty level of coaches we usually see in international management, that is actually a superstar matchup that belongs to the Champions League. It actually seems that the caliber of international management has sort of gone up lately. Usually it's just been a graveyard for old, irrelevant coots who can't scrape together a half-decent job in club football. Say hello to Bobby Martinez, but with everyone having grown up with American culture on the telly, it seems that the USA World Cup has actually been very tempting for very good managers to become involved. I mean, in 2026, we're probably going to have the likes of Julian Nagelsmann, Luciano Spalletti, Marcelo Bielsa, Roberto Mancini, Ralph Ranick, Mauricio Pochettino, Thomas Tuchel, all men who could command top jobs in club football still. They're all going to be together at the World Cup. The standard for this tournament tactically, it could well be the best World Cup we've ever seen. Anyway, that's the video. Let me know because what do you think? What do you think of the two-channel appointment? Let me know in the comments. If you just did it, don't forget to connect your own ways. I'll talk to you in a while.